Hello, I'm Susan Woods, and thank you for your time. The title of this video message is Black Lives Matter Founders, Where Are They Now? Again, Black Lives Matter Founders, Where Are They Now? In this video, I am going to walk you through the websites of each of the three Black Lives Matter founders to let you know what they're up to today. What are they doing today? Here are the Black Lives Matter founders, Opal Tomate, Alicia Garza, and Patrice Kahn Coolers. The story goes that in 2013, these three ladies were talking and sharing their disgust over the acquittal of George Zimmerman in the Trayvon Martin murder. It is said that Alicia Garza coined the phrase Black Lives Matter, the slogan. And then Patrice Kahn Coolers suggested that they add the hashtag in front of it so that it would trend. And Opatomate is said to be the one who secured the blacklivesmatter.com domain for a future website. So that's how this all started in 2013. Since that time, these young ladies have traveled around and spread the word about Black Lives Matter. And then over the course of the last few years, they allowed other organizations to form and then become chapters underneath what has ultimately become, after several name changes, the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. So if you go to blacklivesmatter.com, you will see the website for the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. However, you will not see a link for the chapters anymore because recently 10 chapters published an open letter complaining about the lack of financial transparency from the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation and also explaining that they never received any financial resources that they were promised for being chapters. So as a result of the open letter, Patrice Kahn Coolers, who is currently listed as the executive director of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, made a decision to remove the chapter link from the website. So now we don't know which entities are actual chapters, if there are any entities that are still chapters. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if they just dissolved a chapter opportunity or if it's just not listed, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's not there. So where are these three ladies today? You know, when I look at pictures of protesters protesting last year from June through August, all over the world, chanting Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, diverse groups of people like you see here in this picture, I wonder what they think now. I wonder what they think, because I'm sure they've heard of the uproar surrounding Patrice Kahn Cooler's real estate buying binge. I'm sure they've heard about the lack of financial transparency. I wonder if they feel like their marching was in vain, because what can we tangibly point to to say Black Lives Matter changed this on a federal level? What type of policy changes can we point to as a result of Black Lives Matter, the slogan and the marching and the protesting and even the rioting? What has become of it? So the question is again, Black Lives Matter founders, where are they now? So I'm going to pause the screen so that I can share with you their websites. Each of the three founders have their own individual websites because they are frankly moving away 
from the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. As a matter of fact, two of them have already gone. So I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. So let me pause the screen so that I can get to where I need to be. Because as you know, if you follow me, you know that I believe in um, sharing. I believe in showing you rather where I am going so you can see for yourself. I don't like to just say things. So the first um, website that I'm gonna share with you is the one for Opal Tomate, okay? I'm going to share her website first. Okay, so now you are looking at Opal Tomate's website. And, I, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Opal Tomate, I just wanna make sure I have the right website up. Sorry about that. But this is her website. And as I scroll down, you can see the bio information about her. She's a globally recognized human rights advocate, strategist, and writer of Nigerian American descent. Okay. Um, she has been active in social movements for nearly 20 years and is widely known for her role as a co-founder of Black Lives Matter and for her years of service as the executive director of the United States First National Immigrant Rights Organization for People of African Descent, the Black Alliance for Just Immigration, B-A-J-I. Now she is um, a speaker. She's won several awards, as you can see here on her page. And you can go to her page if you like. You can see all of the awards that she's won. 2021 Nobel Peace Prize nomination. And that was for her work with the other two ladies for the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. So she's won several awards. They were on a time, time cover for 100 most influential women of the last century, so on and so forth. Um, she, her media, recent profiles, you can look at that if you like. This is Opal Tomate, one of the three founders. She has a blog, Black Lives Matter is not a civil rights movement. Okay, that's her blog. One of the topics of her blog. She's been featured in several periodicals as you can see here and so that's impressive resources that she recommends are here she has she's um, speaking engagements Oprah Tomate has graced nearly 100 stages in recent years and has participated in countless events if you'd like to invite her to join you for a speaking engagement please contact the Harry Walker agency you can reach her agent Don Walker by sending an email to his email address. He will gladly assist with your request. So now she has an agent. Okay, so she has moved on up as they say. And then you have different ways to connect with her if you want to complete this connect form. Okay, so that's April. I'm sorry, Oprah Tomate. She is one of the three founders of Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. The next person, I'm going to pause while I move to the next person, is Alicia Garza. Thank you for your patience while I pull up Alicia's website. Okay, so now we're looking at Alicia Garza. Now, Alicia Garza is the person who originally coined the Black Lives Matter Global Network I'm sorry, the blacklivesmatter.com slogan, or the Black Lives Matter slogan, I'm sorry. I'll get it together in a minute. So this is Alicia Garza. Alicia is also an author. She's published a book, The Power of Purpose, How Can We Come Together When We Fall Apart, okay? And this website tells more about her It says, long before hashtag Black Lives Matter became a rallying cry for this generation, Garza has spent the better part of two decades learning and unlearning 
some hard lessons about how to come together when things around us are falling apart. And so I'm, still, I'm assuming she shares that in her book. And then she has places where you can order the book, pre-order the book. And then she has some reviewers. I'm very impressed that Brian Stevenson, the author of Just Mercy, provided some um, testimonial or some a, a review for the book for her. That's very impressive. So Alicia believes that Black communities deserve what all communities deserve, to be powerful in every aspect of their lives. An innovator, strategist, organizer, and cheeseburger enthusiast. Alicia founded the Black Futures Lab to make Black communities powerful in politics. She is the co-creator of hashtag Black Lives Matter and the Black Lives Matter Global Network. They've since added the word foundation to it. The strategy and partnerships director for the National Domestic Workers Alliance and the co-founder of Supermajority. She shares her thoughts on politics and pop culture on her podcast, Lady Don't Take No. She warns you, hashtags don't start movements, people do. So this is Alicia Garza and you can learn more about her if you desire by going to her website. So this is what she's doing. She's writing books and she's hosting podcasts. And she is also, I'm sure, um, continuing with her efforts to travel around and have speaking engagements to promote herself. I've seen her on several national media outlets, such as CBS, NBC, ABC, promoting her books and other things. What hurt me, really bothered me though, when Oprah Winfrey had a special presentation to honor the late Congressman John Lewis, it closed with Alicia Garza talking about Black Lives Matter. I said, oh my gosh, she tarnished it. She tarnished the end of the, the program honoring the late Congressman John Lewis with Alicia Garza at the end. Now I want to also, while I'm talking about Alicia, introduce you to Malachi Garza, this is Alicia Garza's spouse. Malachi also has um, a connection with speaking engagements and the, um, their own opportunities to travel around and talk and promote um, different things that relates not only to black people, but to trans transgender and intersex people and um, other initiatives that you can read for yourself. But this is Alicia Garza's spouse, Malachi Garza, okay? And this is the website. Again, Malachi Garza is an activist as well, okay? Okay. So now I'm going to pause the screen again. And I'm going to move over now to the next founder of Black Lives Matter, who is, of course, the most popular one, I would say. I would say Patrice Conkulas is the most popular member of the Black Lives Matter co-founders group, if you will. So here is Patrice Cullors. Now she doesn't have the con on this website, but to Patrice Cullors, this is her website and it is slick, isn't it? Very attractive, very professionally done. And if you go to the about page, we we'll talk about who she is, Rise of a Freedom Fighter. Patrice Cullors is a New York Times bestselling author, educator, artist, and abolitionist from Los Angeles, California. She is the co-founder of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. Patrice has been on the front line of abolitionist organizing for 20 years. She, since she began the Black Lives Matter movement in 2013, it has expanded into a global foundation supporting Black-led movements in the US, UK, and Canada. Bing, 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 Canada, because her spouse is the one of the co-founders of the Black Lives Matter Toronto, Canada entity. And she's been nominated for the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize. 
I'm not going to read all of this because you can go back and read it. But she's an artist. Okay. Patrice Collar's art is a magnifying glass and amplified moment in the raw and vulnerable stories of the invisible. Okay. So if you want to learn more about, about this, you can certainly go to her website and learn more. Okay. This is her artistic side. Okay. Then she's an author. And this is her authorship and her book publishing is what she claims has given her the opportunity to purchase so much real estate. Okay. She's a collaborator. She's an organizer. She's a speaker. She travels around and she speaks a lot. I've seen her on major um, networks as well. Okay. So this is about Patrice Kahn Coolers, her website. Again, if you want to go out and take a look at it, um, you certainly can, of course. But what I wanted to do in this video message is to give you an idea of, again, where are they now? So I'm going to pause the screen and then I'm going to share with you an article that you've probably already read from the New York Post regarding Patrice Kahn Coolers and her homes that she's purchased or the real estate that she's purchased. And I'm just going to go directly to the real estate part of it because I'm sure you've already heard about um, all of the information regarding or the hoopla around her buying all of these homes. So I'm just going to, I'm right on the page or right on the section of the page where I just want to talk about the Topanga Canyon, Los Angeles location is the one that most people have been talking about because it's said to be valued at $1.4 million. And the irony of it is, it's in a location in Los Angeles that's predominantly white. So the question is, why would she want to buy property in a predominantly white neighborhood in Los Angeles when she is the queen of Black Lives Matter? I mean, she's an activist for Black Lives Matter. So why would she turn her back on Black neighborhoods in Los Angeles to purchase a home in a predominantly white neighborhood in Los Angeles? So this is the one that has a three-bedroom, three bath plus guest house purchased March, 2021 for $1.4 million. What Patrice should have done if she was going to go on a buying binge for real estate, she should have created a trust and purchased the real estate in the name of the trust, not in her name, because this is public record. Anybody could find it. Okay, so in Conyers, Georgia, she purchased a three bedroom house with an airplane hanger purchased it in 2020 for $415,000, okay? In South Los Angeles, she purchased a four bedroom, two bath with a small guest house in two, 2018 for $590,000, which is now worth $720,000. I don't fault her for investing in real estate because most of the time it's gonna appreciate in value. The concern that most people have is where is the money coming from? And since George Floyd's murder was such a juggernaut for money flooding the blacklivesmatter.com website to the point that they admit to receiving at least $90 million, is she using some of that money for her own personal gain? Now, I know she didn't purchase this uh, house in 2018 with the money because that was before he died. In 2016, she purchased a home in Inglewood, Los Angeles, three bedroom room, 1.5 bath with a backyard tree house, purchased in 2016 before George Floyd died for $510,000, now worth $775,000. And then 
New Providence, Bahamas. Okay. They said con callers and wife were looking at units last year, but a purchase is not confirmed for this. But this is where Justin Timberlake and Tiger Woods um, would be her neighbors. So this is just information on the um, purchases that she recently made regarding real estate. And people are just wondering how she, how she was able to afford these properties. Now, remember, before George Floyd died, Black Lives Matter existed between 2013 up until he died. And they used money that they exploited paying for financial gain even before he died. Remember Michael Brown? When he died, his father is now calling for them to give them money to give back to the community in his son's name because he feels like they exploited his son's name, his son's murder for financial gain through Black Lives Matter. Another parent is calling for them to stop exploiting the death of their son is Tamir Rice's mother. So the money was coming in, but George Floyd murder took it over the top and really um, raised the amount of money that no one could have ever imagined. So I just want to share that with you. Now I'm going to pause the screen and I'm going to close this video out. Going back to the PowerPoint and just close it out. And thank you for your patience. Okay. Thank you for your patience. So the final word for this video is after all of the protesting last year from all around the world, people risking their lives during COVID to march in the hot boiling sun with a mask on, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, not really knowing where we were going with that. They still risked their lives to chant Black Lives Matter for Black people. I wonder how they are feeling today. I wonder if they're asking the question, Black Lives Matter founders, where are they now? In this video, we see that they've moved on. Patrice Conkoulis is the only one of the three that's still affiliated with the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. She's the only one. And her affiliation is very weak, very weak. She's said to be the executive director some days, and some days she's said not to be affiliated, at, affiliated with it at all. So who knows? Now, this is where we are. Where are they now? They, are, they have moved on with their lives. They are embarking on very lucrative business deals and they've gone on. That's where they are now. The Black Lives Matter founders, founders have moved on with their lives with no accountability for what they're doing or what they have done. And that's sad. I'm Susan Woods, continuing to press on. Thank you for your encouragement. Have a great day.